Listen to this question that a reporter asked Gary Cohen about the bonuses that do hundreds of companies have already given to their employees as a result of the tax cut. Roll it. If we just had a litany of, of, of businesses that are going to give back to the American people, but doesn't isn't it unfair to, to give the president credit for that? They already had that money in their coffers, right? I mean, what we're saying, are they, they would have not turned it loose otherwise? Let's say that that reporter is rather skeptical about giving any credit to President Trump for the givebacks that corporations are now giving back. Ed Fulner is with us, Heritage Foundation founder. Uh, I think Gary Cohen answered the question very well. He simply said, I totally disagree. But to me, it was an example of the media would never, ever give any credit, if possible, to anything that President Trump does. Absolutely, Stuart. And... That, that reporter must be having too many swishy uh, meals with uh, Nancy Marie Antoinette Pelosi, uh, who reminded people that we, they were only giving out crumbs. There's Jamie Dimon, who's had big policy differences with Donald Trump, talking about 20,000 net new jobs, 400 new branches opening. He's no friend of Donald Trump, but he sees what's happening with the economy. He wants to make his company better. That's what the whole tax cut's all about. That's what we're talking about. Look, I, I think that American business w was put on trial almost by these tax cuts because business got almost everything it wanted. And now the question is, well, what are you going to do for us? You got what you wanted. What are you doing for us? I think they're passing the test. What say you? Absolutely. Not only passing the test, this isn't just trickle down. This is building up. This is creating new jobs, new opportunities, new factories. Uh, the, the whole economy is just looking so much better because of what everybody coming together last month did in terms of, of giving us this whole new tax policy. I'm really very, very bullish. And like you and Art Laffer, I think uh, we're going to see all-time highs in the months ahead. Wait a second. You, you, you were watching our interview with Art Laffer, and we were speculating about 30,000 on the Dow by the end of the year. We were sort of joking. You think we were serious? Do you, you think we're going to hit 30,000 on the Dow? Stuart, when I was on in November and talked about us hitting 25 by the end of the year, uh, then all of a sudden, a week later, we're at 26. Wow, I think 30,000 is very possible. You look at all the fundamentals, they're still looking very, very good for the whole economy. We've got great opportunities ahead all across the board. And the quarterly results coming in, the year-end results coming in are proving that. We're going to outpace the world so dramatically, uh, Davos is going to be shuddering in its mountains. <laughs> Okay, I love the sound of this. Now, Senator Schumer, he's backtracking on the border wall. Uh, roll tape and let's see what he's got to say. So we're going to have to uh, start, start uh, on a new basis, and uh, the wall offers off the table. No wall. And here's the response from President Trump. Crying Chuck Schumer fully understands, especially after the humiliating defeat, that if there is no wall, there's no DACA. We must have safety and security together with a strong military for our great people. You know, I think the president's playing hardball here on immigration. You're going to build that wall no matter what. That's what he's saying, isn't he? He is, and he's also saying we've got to do something about the chain migration problem, about undocumented generally. Uh, there's, there's so many different pieces to that. And, Stuart, one of the most heartening things to me was that Joe Manson and Heidi Heiskamp and some of these other senators are finally getting the message that they better get on the Trump train because they're up for re-election this time, and they better help in, in, with their common-sense coalition here to make sure that sensible things are happening here in Washington. Uh, President Trump takes off for Davos tonight. He speaks on Friday. You're laughing. What, what do you think the reception's going to be for our president over there? Uh, Stuart, I was one of the token conservatives who used to go to Davos under the George W. Bush and even back to the Ronald Reagan administrations. And I go over there with Bob Bartley from the Wall Street Journal and with Bill Bennett, the Secretary of Education, and they'd uh, parade us out and show us off as being how, how broad-minded Davos is. Look, this is not a Trump audience, but Trump going over there and talking straight to them about what's really going on in the United States, how the United States is the world leader, not only on the security side, but particularly on the economic side. 
I think it's going to be a, a home run, a grand slam one, really. I <laughs> just love it. I hope he speaks on Friday during our showtime, because I want to see it live. Ed Fulner, we'll see you again very soon, sir. Thank you very much indeed. All right. Uh, Thanks, by the way.